are there mental exercises you can do to like feel like you're getting yourself out of a out of a bad time with money like it's so well that's it yeah hello guys welcome to another episode of our anxiety hacks podcast my name is gabby and i'm liv and this is the podcast where we talk about everything to do with mental health and well-being our guest today shane purcell uh who is a mental health facilitator gives us his intake on uh, personal finances and how that connects to our mental health. Enjoy the podcast. Today we have uh, Shane back on the podcast for a part two of today, of the Anxiety Hacks podcast. So, hi, Shane. Hi, guys. Hi, Thanks Shane. for having me back. How are you Thank guys you doing? Thank you for being in the show. It was so excited no to problem. have you the first time. And now it's like even more exciting because we already know you. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's like it's having a an old friend having, you know, in the show. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Nice and familiar to be around. (laughs) The ice was well and truly broken first time. We talked for a long time. That was, uh, yeah, it was very informative and hopefully people liked it and got something (laughs) out of it, right? Yeah, exactly. So uh, just for the listeners, uh, Shane, uh, this is Shane Purcell and he is a mental health group, uh, support group facilitator over in the Cayman Islands, which is an awesome job title really. Do you really enjoy it? (laughs) Of course. Uh, yeah. It's just great just to help people, you know. Um, yeah, exactly. Because that's what, so I did it for a similar charity um, back in Ireland called AWARE um, mm. for uh, for a couple of years. So it's, um, yeah, it's just, um, yeah, it's nothing better than trying to help people, you know, just give them some tools as well, maybe yeah. uh, coping mechanisms, um, stuff like that. So, but I also do um, some business development as well for a uh, family office here uh, in Cayman. So um, my mental health kind of work is all volunteer work uh, with the Alex so nice. Foundation. How do you balance your time between your group and, and, of course, your job? How do you do it? That's it. It's tough. Just, I guess, time <laughs> management, right? I, I put everything into my phone, into my reminders. I just live off of that. Um, obviously the calendars as, as well google calendars but i don't know i just find the reminders in my phone because it just keeps popping up and you can like reset it an hour later and so on and so forth so i just find and sometimes in life it's about making things as easy as possible right we all have mm. our own ways of simplifying things so whatever works but definitely i, I feel in life we kind of trying to work smarter not harder so and we can do to take make things life easy for us right um mm. But yeah, time time management is important. But uh, not saying mine is any good or great. But I definitely uh, mm-hmm. definitely do my best. And you know, trying uh, wear wearing several hats, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. Oh, let's just say a jack of all trades. Is that I don't know if that's a Kiwi phrase. Have you heard that before? No. We, yeah, of course. Yeah, jack of all yeah. trades. Okay. Cool. That's, un- that's pretty. <laughs> I, ne- I never heard that phrase. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I said it in France once, and I got some really odd looks after I said it. Like J- Jack trades, like who the- what are no you talking? Way. Jack who? <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny, funny, isn't it? Anyway. I love how other country cultures don't pick up the stuff. It's just like, and it goes both ways because I laugh oh, at myself totally. too if I don't. Yeah, so. exactly. Um, but what you're talking about before in terms of you doing like businessy side of stuff kind of leads into what me and Gabby wanted to talk to you about today. Um, yeah. with managing finances because we all know how uh, money, especially in your young age, well, I don't know what it's like at your age, but um, I don't know, at this age, it can be very stressful at times. <laughs> <laughs> managing money I'm for sure. females is hard. <laughs> yeah. young in general, I would imagine so. But for women, I think uh, there's like an extra layer because we yeah. tend to have more expenses for some reason. At least I do. Uh, and if yeah. you sit down and analyze them and look at them, you're like, is this necessary? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like, you know, budgeting is a problem, especially when you're in college. Yep. Yeah. I, I, I was going to ask you that actually before I, I started my so is what um uh what yeah, I was going to well, you kind of answer it in a way. What makes you feel that it's so hard for a young person like you try and manage expense? Is it because You've got so much going on. You're starting out in life, and maybe college expenses, life expenses, or is it just a mixture of everything? Right. I would say it's a it's a mix of everything because when you're in college, you obviously have limited money, so mm-hmm. uh, you have to sort of 
budget that money so that you can have a little bit of fun and then also pay for your books, for your food, bills, etc. But at the same time, I feel like our knowledge of personal finances can be a little bit limited. Like uh, when I think mm. of high school, like I don't think I ever took one class where they taught us how to manage our personal finances or mm. how to budget or how to save a little bit for later, much mm. less about 401ks or anything like that. So when you're in college, you're pretty much going in blind, you know, and you're like, okay, you, you, I relied on YouTube to learn how to budget my money, I remember. And when I had my first job, I had to look up like what a 401k was, which was really what funny because they, they don't explain it to you at, uh, you know, during an interview. So a 401k in the US is like your, your retirement plan. Right. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. So you, you save a little bit of money, you know, every time you get paid, they put mm. like a, you know, a month, they, they take it from you and like, it goes to your 401k. Right. Um, but I didn't know a lot of things, you know, and personal finances for a while was like this mystery thing. <laughs> and I, it was, there, I had a lot of trial and errors, you know, to save my money. That's what I was going to say. It's like anything in life, uh, you know, as you get older, you get wiser with how to do things and how to manage it. So like, don't knock yourself because um, that's what life is all about. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And, as, and, and I, again, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not a planner. So again, just put that caveat out there and disclaimer um, uh, for sure. Same with my mental health stuff. Like I'm not a clinician, but look, I just try to help people where I can and pass on mm -hmm. notice of information. But um, cool. yeah, but the, um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, well, I suppose, where do you want to guys want to start? I suppose, um, you know, one of the, actually there was a survey, I think recently it was back in 2020, uh, mm. 64%, 64% of Americans surveyed say they're stressed about money. Um, wow. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a big, it's a big number. Um, yeah. Well, I guess, yeah. Shane, what would be interesting is maybe what, have you had times in your life where you've felt really what what do you call that fi like financially scarce financially insecure how, how would you say that not so not feeling like you yeah, have that I think much it, financial freedom scarce is a good word mm. yeah insecure is that what you said financially insecure unstable said, yeah. maybe unstable yeah sorry yeah. <laughs> I, I, sorry i pulled out some really horrible words <laughs> i don't know where they came from yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, it would have went through that like when I was younger, um, mm. just trying to manage money. Like, like sometimes you have to boil it down to the biggest expenses, right? Which is for a lot of people, young people is rent. Mm. So mm. that's what I think you kind of have to kind of start and focus, see where your big outgoings are going. Um, and obviously rent is one. So is there anything you can do on that? You know, can you talk to your landlord to get a reduction? Can you shop around from to, to see different places? So that's one thing. And then obviously another big expense with people and even young people would be obviously travel. You know, if you have a mm. car, you know, can you get to it? I know these are simple fixes, but it's good just to, just to highlight, take a step back, I suppose, as well as important. And just uh, sit back and analyze, you know, where you're writing that all down, where your outcomes are going. Because sometimes when you're in the moment, you don't realize, geez, did I spend that? Like a couple of hundred and, and you don't remember it. So go back over your account in the moon and just try to analyze, okay, well, do I really need those things? You know, prioritize uh, the necessities, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's also helpful in, in life as well to have a mentor um, that you can turn to, you know, who is good in finances and just, you know, ask for tips and uh, ask how, how they manage their, their money. Um, another important thing is like making one financial decision at a time. Sometimes we get stressed if we're having to make, a few all at once and it can mm. become very overwhelming. So maybe just do one at a time, come back later in the month to relook at something. So I think that's, um, that's a big thing. Uh, and obviously I touched on tracking your spending. Uh, like it, could, mm. it could be as simple as just an, an Excel sheet. Just write it down, your debits and credits. Or these days we have it all anyway on our bank statement online. We can, sometimes we can export that information. Um, mm. Well, yeah, because, again, when you're in the moment, you don't realize how much you're spending throughout the month. You might have forgotten weeks ago. 
So that's important. Um, yeah, I suppose it kind of depends on where you're living too, because like I went from living in a city area last year where, you know, it's so accessible to just get your card out and swipe for a coffee or go get something from your local supermarket, like walk around mm-hmm. and you just accumulate things. Whereas now I'm living in a bit more of a rural area and I'm noticing that I definitely don't spend as much or I don't swipe my card as much. But then mm. when I do have the chance to swipe a card, it's usually like for a bigger purchase all at once. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, actually. Mm. I feel like that also, I don't know if you noticed, but like when I'm usually purchasing things or I'm with friends and I'm just swiping the card, like at the moment I'm having fun, but I have like that low-key anxiety knowing that I'm just charging things to my card and later I yeah. have to go home and check. Yeah, it sucks. and that that like <laughs> causes me like a little bit of anxiety. I have to like you know take a sip and calm down for a moment, um, just because yeah. when you're, you're you're having fun, you're drinking, for example, or you're eating, or you're out, you know, you're not thinking really. And it like I don't know if that happens to you, but to me, it's like oh, what's another twenty bucks? What's another thirty? Oh, you yeah. know, this is fifteen. Yeah. But you go home and that adds up, and you ended up spending I don't know two hundred dollars in a whole weekend you know so um i think i think definitely controlling your finances can help your mental health <laughs> because <laughs> you know it it causes anxiety definitely i can't oh, imagine does. what it's like being in like debt and not being able to pay it i mean the amount of stress that can cause i can't even imagine and there yeah. are a lot of people right now dealing i think I read an article not too long ago about, like, for example, in the U.S. I, I I can't tell you the number because I totally forgot, but it was like a tremendous percentage of people that live in debt. And even when they're older, they're mm-hmm. still paying that debt and they can't get rid of it. You know, yeah. And they live their Especially lives. Especially student debt. Yeah. 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 That's a thing. It's weird. Eh? It's like there's debt and then there's student debt. And for some reason, when you say student debt, I feel like the stigma isn't as well. I, th- I guess in the US it would be scary because, well, actually, do you guys have interest on your student loans wherever you are? Um, I'm not sure, actually. How about Peru, Gabby? No, no, we don't even have financial aid, honestly. I mean, I didn't study here in Peru. I studied in the U.S., but I don't think we do. Um, I never heard any friend say, hey, I applied for financial aid or anything like that. Right. Um, I don't think so. But in the U.S., yeah, there you have to pay like it, it, it can add up, you know, because you have interests and everything. I never had access to it because I was an international student, but uh, and I was lucky enough for my parents, you know, to pay for my studies, but I had friends who had to worry about that. You know, they were like, oh, first job. Yay. But I have to like pay a huge amount of, you know, <laughs> the chunk put it aside. Back. Yeah. That chunk yeah. that goes to your debt. And it's, it's, it's horrible because you can really progress that way. You know, like you can yeah. advance in your mm-hmm. career because there's that expense that it's like, can let you save or anything. Mm. And especially in the states, you've got to worry about your credit score more. So, well, I suppose more most countries have a credit oh, score. Yeah. But don't forget about that. If you like default on a loan or forget to pay something back or something like that, then you know that can negatively affect your credit score. So, you know that's why it's important. I guess most people it's just to try and avoid taking out loans if you can, because if you can't pay it back, then you know something like that could happen. Um, what else? When you go back about, I remember you talked about spending so much on a night out. What I used to do was like, if you just take out 200, and you know, that might be a night for a lot of night out, but maybe just 100. But bring that cash, at least then you know you've got, okay, I might get drunk, but I've only got this amount to spend. Ah. So that could be an idea. Mm. But there's a flip side to that. In case you don't leave enough for your taxi at the end of the night. So be careful with that idea too. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever um, been stranded, <laughs> Shane? Yeah, have you? No, look, I feel like you have. <laughs> I feel, yeah, all right. Do I look like someone who has, right? <laughs> I think we I think we've all feel str- stranded at one stage in life. <laughs> but um yeah, it's just as you say, like Gabby, you finished up what you're talking about there, how yeah, the stress and anxiety, and it can often lead to depression as well, you know, because it just gets you into a whole 
we're coming to, to money, right, and trying to pay it mm. back. And don't forget, a lot of institutions have, uh, especially the credit unions, don't forget they got payment plans. So if you got debt in one place, you can maybe merge all your debt into one place or your loans that you're trying to pay off. If right. things get a bit overwhelmed, mm. you know, you can actually combine them. There's definitely companies that do that now. And then they work yeah. with you to develop a payment plan. So that's important not to feel overwhelmed that there's no resource. And also, you, you know, it's good to have a good support network around you as well, have friends and family, um, not mm. necessarily for, you know, to help you out monetary wise, but just the psychological support as well. I think that's Definitely. very important. Yeah. Um, um, when you've been, you know, you, you host, you do these um, mental health support groups. Do you get many people coming through who are having um, financial yeah. issues and you notice it in their mental health? Yeah, obviously I can't go into specifics because it's all private course, and confidential. Yeah. But in general, generally speaking, yeah, um, mm. it's it's because it's probably like even for most of us, right, day to day, it's like managing money and expense can be so stressful and it can trigger um, a lot of anxiety. Oh, definitely. You know, uh, you know how am I going to get? Especially, especially coming into recessions or talk about recessions, even people get anxious before you know, that and people are just even talking about recession and you, you get a lot of anxiety. So, so yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's really, it's really important to try and how you can try and manage your emotions um, with relating to relation to money and just, mm. I guess a lot, a lot of it boils down to just to prioritize and, you know, what you need rather than what you want. Mm. Um, mm. So again, focus on the necessities first and then, and you've got left over at the end of the month, then you can spend it within your budget on entertainment stuff. So a lot of people do that, as in get rid of their big outgoings at the start of the month. You know, if you're, I suppose, in your early 20s, you might have a mortgage, but like you could like start to get that out at the, end, at the start of the month, pay all your bills at the start of the month, and then you know exactly what you've left uh, at the end of the month for entertainment maybe. So there's different ways around it, you know, but it's, it's horses for courses, I think, as in like everyone's different. Um, mm. So you have to kind of work it around you. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was going to say there must be so many people, you know, out there. And I know that definitely when I've been in my worst stages of feeling depressed where you just you don't even want to look at your bank account. And aside from, you know, budgeting and, I don't know, doing things financial-wise to make sure you you're not too – you know, broke for that month or broke for that week, et cetera. Are there mental exercises you can do to like feel like you're getting yourself out of a out of a bad time with money? Like it's so well that's a, yeah, well it's a fair enough question, but that goes mm -hmm. back to what we talked about in our last part podcast as in relieving that stress and anxiety, which I'm gonna ah, have to turn awesome. again to exercise. Yeah. Yeah. I mean <laughs> exercise. I mean, you know, there's nothing as better as getting onto the nature because being outside and going for a run, like even in the nature and nice environment has been shown to reduce your cortisol levels by, mm. uh, if you just stay out there for just for 20 minutes. So mm. it's crazy how being out in a nice environment, uh, go for a run, you know, it might help you to think about later because you come back with a runner's high after all those good chemicals in your brain get released. Like mm -hmm. I know it would in the last one, but like you got endorphins, you got dopamine, you got BDNF, serotonin, like it's crazy how all these good chemicals in your brain can make you feel. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess that's one way. Um, but I definitely think sharing the problem, as in talking to someone, yeah. that's first and foremost. Because sometimes we, like any kind of a problem, be it finance or anything in life, we just, we, we internalize it. We take it all on ourselves. But don't forget, like mm. a lot of people are going through financial stress. So, you know, if you talk to someone, they might have a great tip. It's so important just to talk to people because there's people out there that can help you and support you and just give you coping mechanisms as well for managing your finances or your mental totally. health, whichever it may be. Yeah, I think that, that's often like something that kind of washes over, definitely washes over me when it comes to like talking to someone else about my financial problems because there's always that thought for me, I always have this sort of, oh, if I tell them that I'm struggling financially, they're going to assume that I'm wanting something from them, you know? Yeah. Um, I think it's a, it's a sucky stigma to have, but I'm sure it will it will relieve if we all just <laughs> not talk about our finances necessarily, but talk about our problems, you know? Yeah. It's and, also and a little embarrassing, you know? 
because yeah, people totally. like on, you know you you always want to look uh put together like you're you you don't want to look like you're struggling all the time and you know like uh, i feel like people hide a lot of things you know like from from a lot of times when uh for example i share things with my friends you know like i see them as the happiest people you can ever uh you know be and when they open up like there are so many things going on in their lives and i'm like oh my god like we really disguise things and we keep those inside mm. those feelings inside you know and and, mm. and we go home and, and cry and and you know go through this uh horrible uh you know depression or anxiety moment you know episode and it's like I feel like it helps to talk about it, but also like we should like be more open to like or destigmatize the whole money talk. You know, like we all struggle. We we're young. We we have these issues. Like yeah. I think we should maybe like normalize it a little bit too. Yeah, yeah. And, and that be- I think that begins. And I was actually going to touch on this for a second. And that mm-hmm. actually begins at you know, obviously in school. If there was some way mm. that curriculums these days could like um, put some life hacks training in in some kind of a course or just basic financial one on one stuff, I mean, mm. you know, I, I feel that's because I, I did actually a presentation there going back last year um, with a local school here. They're actually school leavers, um, just with some life hacks for like managing your finances because they are all going off to university, um, yeah. things like that. And actually, one of the things I touched on was like looking at your bank statement and just figuring out bank charges um because mm-hmm. often mm-hmm. in a lot of countries um definitely in cayman uh there, you can be charged um you know you got a stamp duty you got a government duty basically every time you make a transaction on the card and i can't say for sure if that's all banks but certainly um some of the banks I've seen. Uh, so basically what I'm trying to say is maybe take out a lump sum of cash. Obviously, you've got to worry about security then, but I'm just trying to cut down on some of the expenses and the fees because like mm. those fees, if you're using your debit card every transaction every day, that can add up. And I've seen it on my account statement, it add up to like maybe $35, $40 a month. So, you mm. know, one way of cutting out some of those expenses and charges is just to withdraw maybe $200 at a time every time you need it. Um, mm. Yeah, so I, I don't know if that is helpful, but it definitely helped me. You know, when you've got, you're going to college, or you're young, even at school, and then going to college as well, and you make friends, you can't choose who you make, well, you can choose who you make friends with, but, you know, those who are you're close with, you can't help all the time. And, you know, I, I often found it hard having friends who came from, like, a lot wealthier backgrounds and trying to like keep up with them. And that was something I definitely struggled with through throughout college, not necessarily keeping up, but not feeling bad about not being able to keep up, you know, Uh, getting. I totally get what you say. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Yeah. Like, yeah. uh, It's it's, It's it's keeping up with the Joneses. Like there's a term on that, right? Keeping up with the Joneses. Like the movie. Yes. Yeah. You had it. I have friends. And it starts really young. It's not really. Because, like, if you watch the movie, um, I saw the movie, you know, uh, with um, Demi, Demi Moore, I think. Oh, okay. And 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 they make it seem like it's, you know, uh, this whole thing of keeping up with the Joneses. It starts when you are much older. Like, at, at least that's what I got from from the movie. You know, um, when you're comparing your mm. house to like your neighbor and your your mm. car and your, mm. but I feel like it starts really young, like when you're totally. in high school or college yeah. like i had friends who were like oh let's go to europe next month and i'm like yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah or let's That's go so to the much. bahamas or you know for the weekend and i'm trying to figure out how i'm gonna buy my books or yeah you know, it can be so stressful like it can cause well that for me caused so much anxiety just being like having to pitch in and say oh look i can't go on that trip like i feel like you're letting someone down by not being able to go on that trip and not that that would make me feel that way, but sometimes it'd be like the stigma of, oh, poor, there's that, mm. oh, that's the poor friend. We won't invite her to this this time or something. So, like was that. there any ways that you could actually, or how do you guys manage that then for anybody listening, uh, like young women, like, like yourselves? How do you just go along with the, go with the flow, go along with the show? Or Absolutely like, not. You... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What about you, Gabby? 
I think I was, I was going to say, you know, um, it's so funny because we were, we were going to touch, you know, toxic friendships as well or relationships. Mm. And I feel like that connects really well with that because I had the two. I had friends who were like, oh, my God, you're so poor. I remember, you know, when I was younger, when I was like 20, 21. And I was like, I genuinely can't go. I really can't do this. I'm budgeting. I'm serious about my money, you know, mm. my expenses and whatever. And I had friends who would like friends who would like judge me for it. You know, like, mm. why can't your mom just pay? Why can't your dad just pay? You know, and I was like, I would look at them and I would be like, that's so tone deaf in a way. And then yeah. I had friends who were like, you know what? I actually get you. Like, I may may have the means and may not know what it's what it's like to to worry about money, mm-hmm. um, but uh, I understand what you're saying. Or maybe let me help you out. Uh, do you need anything? Yeah. You know, like mm-hmm. I had those friends too, and it was so refreshing to mm. to 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 be with people like that. Just because you know, all this time you're thinking like, oh my god, uh, it's all in your head. You know, like uh you feel insecure you feel like mm. um you know um you you feel left out right but then the mm. moment you talk to somebody who's like empathetic and uh is genuinely worried and 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 cares for you you know it's it's really refreshing when you have people that that actually care for you and help you um and understand you know your situation especially financial situations you know so it's like it's really refreshing yeah and i think that boils down to kind of having a really like we all have lots of friends but it's important to have that inner circle of maybe yeah. one or two friends who, who you know you can count on right and just it's it's mm-hmm. it's they're the ones you kind of want to listen to and respect like everything else is just fluff outside of that you know you shouldn't and this goes back to what i talked about last time i think i touched on it, as in you know people can say anything to you but it's how you react to that right you have no mm. control over someone saying something to you but so at the end of the day you have to know um you know like do i respect this person you know and you know mm-hmm. if you're just meeting random people then you mightn't really you know it's, it's about i guess controlling trying to control emotions and um yeah not letting um things try to get you easier said and done right um yeah. mm-hmm. But, I definitely think um, that's something. Oh, sorry, you go. <laughs> no, go on, finish. I was just going to say it's definitely something that you can. That's a good piece of advice before going to college or going to a new city or moving to a new, you know, area. Is that you, you kind of well, you're desperate for friends, but you want to fit in or you want to try meet people, so you almost like let down your. <sighs> Your guard. Your guard. You let no. down your guard. Oh, yeah. And that's when that whole thing of like, oh, what is another $20? Oh, what is another $30 on drinks for this person tonight? Yeah. Kind of come in. <laughs> mm. like, it's interesting, eh? Yeah. Shane, I, I was going to ask life. you. Yeah. Do you think that, you know, um, learning how to control your expenses and like, basically not caring about uh you know uh what other people will say or mm. do you think that knowledge right comes with age or in your opinion Definitely. anybody can yes. fall in that into that that whole trap of you know trying to uh spend money just so that you can impress other people or or build relationships yeah i think it's like a lot of stuff in life comes with age right you get to learn the do's and the don'ts you know, even when it comes to friends, you get to realize suppose, who you can rely on, who you can't rely on. So that's why, mm. again, it's back to having that close inner circle. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a definitely a double edged sword. Because my mom, I think of my mom, you know, like she doesn't care. You know? <laughs> like, <laughs> even when when she talks about her friends, like if a friend is not serving, not I don't like to say serving her well, but like, you know, it's not helping her uh, or, mm. or, or, you know uh yeah like serving the friendship or whatever she's like you know i uh, she told me once i would rather have no friends or one friend than 10 different people who are like going to come to my house and judge me or like Mm -hmm. uh you know not be a very good influence to my family to me and i i used to think like oh that's so crazy you know when i was younger i was so worried about networking and and having a really good circle friends in college you know and 
And I would think about that and I was like, well, you're going to end up alone. But then as I became older, <laughs> I started filtering my friendships as well, you know, and yeah. funny enough that, you know, helped also my f- personal finances. Like I realized I didn't, I no longer felt forced to spend that much to go on mm. such trips or do mm. this or do that. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. And I think it's important as well to kind of, and it goes with anything you like, is to kind of, you know, be strategic with what you spend your energy on and who you spend your energy with, right? And time. Like, mm-hmm. I definitely think these days, like, time and attention is like every, everyone's vying for our attention, right? Even on yeah. social media and companies, right? So, like, uh, that's another thing for us coming, obviously, another conversation for another day. But it's, um, yeah, it's about, especially after COVID and stuff, like, I think everybody's got to sit back and kind of, they kind of reassess their lives and just work life balance and even money. Oh, yeah. Right. Like they're calling it now, like the great resignation when it comes to mm. like the workplace. Right. So that's, that's interesting, isn't it? It shouldn't have got to that point. Right. That COVID mm. had to make as like a pandemic to sit back and realize, are we doing what we really want to do? And, mm. you know, is there, is there a better way we can do things, especially back to finances and actually something we didn't touch on. Um, because I know we, we we basically just initially talked about trying to survive day to day, money wise. But if you're starting young, it's always and anybody will tell you this financial advice is to start early when it comes to investing. If you can do that, put a small lump sum. It doesn't have to be much because over years this all builds up with the power of compounding, right? So that's yeah. your principal amount every year, and then the interest. I cannot stress enough the importance of compounding. It's probably the most basic and um, probably original kind of keystone or pillar of investing. Um, okay, so- yeah, I'm I'm quite keen to get more into this, Shane, because um, mm. yeah, it, it is the advice that is always told. Well, it's definitely like spread here, even throughout university. All my friends are like getting those, you know, those apps where you can like buy shares, but like you're kind of mm. making the app money, but then they still give you yeah. the money. And yeah. I've, I've invested mm-hmm. a, a little bit in that, like honestly, like fifteen dollars, not much at all, because I'm too scared to put any money down. But in the in the way of cryptocurrency and NFTs, this this all this stuff of investing stresses me out so much. And I don't know if it's because I haven't. Well, it's definitely because I don't know that much about it. But like, how much should we be letting this investory type stuff that we're all being preached about affect what we do with our money right now? Do yeah, you know? of course it, it is. Yeah. It's, it's very, it's a temptation, isn't it? It's like yeah, the it's high scary. returns or the, the excitement around the investing and stuff. But sometimes, especially when it comes to investing, it's, and especially if you're starting out young, it's always just the easiest and the simplest thing. And without, without going into too much detail, it's just to literally buy um, a fund or uh, there's funds out there that can track the market, right? Mm. The stock market. So, that's all you need. You just need something to put money away on a monthly basis rather than trying to pick out individual stocks, right? Because that can go up and down and, you know, you're taking a lot of risk. But over time, 10, 20 years longer, if you're just putting money in today into the stock market as a whole, right? Because um, there's they're what, they're what they're called are indexes. So these indexes basically mirror what's in the, say, for example, the S&P 500, um, so yeah, oh, yeah, I mean, I don't want to be given financial advice, but like any financial advisor will say, um, you know, start off a small amount every month if you can and just try to build over time. Yeah. So back to what you were saying about NFTs and stuff. Yeah. They're all great, but they're all high risk, right? It's like, um, mm-hmm. in life. So, um, don't know if that helped much, but <laughs> that's good. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to ask, like, what is safe and what is risky, you know, because um, obviously, you know, with the whole thing of the NFTs and it, that's pretty new, right? I was wondering, you know, before that, uh, what is like a safer approach? Like, you know, because uh, sometimes your banks will reach out to you, you know, like banks here reach out to me and they're like, oh, do you want to do this? There are some plans for you, you know, we'll we'll do the work for you, you know. Um, and then there are like I- independent agencies that focus on also personal investing. So mm-hmm. I was wondering, you know, what is safe and what is not? Obviously, you know, the whole cryptocurrency thing is very uh, risky, volatile for what, from what I heard. 
I'm thinking, you know, like what what should what should be the first approach for a young person? <laughs> yeah. Well, see, don't forget for as a young person, and most people will say this to your advisors that you're so young in life to start out that you can actually take some risk. Mm, um, sure. But at the same time, like when it comes to crypto, I think some of the advice out there is to not put more than maybe 1% or maybe a max of 5% of your net worth into crypto, mm-hmm. right? Um, and then don't forget the ICO market, which was the initial coins, initial coin offering back in, was it 2018, 2017, when that ran up, but then they all like cratered. Um, so they didn't do good, right? But Bitcoin did, and you got Ethereum, couple of other ones um but yeah you're you are taking risk with getting into some of those especially if it's in like a bear market or what to call them maybe now with crypto is it could be in the winter as in you know there's not much happening and it's it's fairly stagnated the prices aren't going up so right. yeah sorry gabby come back to your question yeah it's um when it comes to investing, it's all about your time horizon, uh, how much you have, and how much risk you're willing to take, right? Um, mm. But like low risk, as I mentioned, is something like buying um, an index that m- tracks the S&P 500 because that way you're diversifying, you know, it's, mm. you're diversifying your money across X number of companies um, rather than picking out, you know, crypto coins or other kind of, stocks mm. uh, well at the same time it is good to play around and it is good for um, young people to get into kind of looking at stocks and you know how to work because it is good we all need financial literacy we all need to learn it um, mm, and start off and start off young so take a little yeah. risk but just know your downside um, yeah I mean as you said then there's banks then will offer you kind of the savings uh, options maybe with maybe a couple of percentage um, of interest, maybe a few more than that, or whatever. But like, just trying to make the point that uh, depends. You know, if if you go for like a just a regular savings account, well, you're not going to get high interest. So it's like any investment. The more risk you take, the higher your return. So um, it's all about assessing because everybody's don't forget everyone's appetite for risk is different, right? So you have to kind mm-hmm. of know your own how you feel because you don't want it to cause anxiety, right? So mm, it's yeah. good yeah. just to start off small. Because I wanted to go back to that point, Shane, with, um, you know, okay, we're talk- we've been talking a bit about investing and in- that kind of thing and the side of finances where you have to budget and that. When does it all become too much to the point that the numbers and you checking your bank account and how much you're spending every day and what you're investing your money in and how that's going, when does that become too much, That the anxiety of it? you shouldn't be looking at as much. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, no, you, you hit, yeah, you've hit the nail in the head because that goes back yeah. to mental health and it's the same question as yeah. in when does um, the anxiety of a situation become too much? It's when mm. it impacts with your daily routine, right? Yeah. Mm. Um, right, okay. It's, yeah, so it's, it's anxiety becomes a problem when it comes um, chronic or long-lasting, Um don't forget, we all get a bout of anxiety with a situation, say, I don't know, you're trying to cross the road or something simple like that. But that's only a short burst. But it's, the, the anxiety comes a problem when it comes more of a long-term um, kind of a thing, you know, because, mm. again, the problem with anxiety is the more you fight it, the harder it kind of gets. You almost have to acknowledge that it's there, right? I know I keep yeah. talking just before a bit, mm. but it is. It's so important to kind of, you know, acknowledge that it's there on your shoulder, so to speak, and just say, okay, I know you're there. I know how I'm feeling, but, you know, I'm not going to die. Maybe take a step back and say, you know, is, is it really worth me feeling mm. this anxiety for this situation? Yeah, right? Sometimes, yeah. Because, again, that goes back to, like, your amygdala and your reptilian brain, how that's when the anxiety comes from, the hippocampus and all that region. Basically, it's your survival mode. Mm, um, mm-hmm. So then your rational, which is your prefrontal cortex, that kicks in. That's your rational mind. So that's supposed to kick in uh, mm. to reassess something. If something was, okay, should I really be feeling anxious about this? And then ideally that's when your rational mind, so to speak, is supposed to click in. Um, yeah. You have to go to counselling for one of those now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> I was going to ask you, I feel like obviously, you know, um, money talk is a 
something like you said, it's really important to have financial literacy, uh, mm. especially. I, I consider, you know, there should be at least one course in high school that yeah. teaches you, you know, basic, yeah. basic things, you know, what to expect when you get out exactly. of high school, you know. Um, and so I was going to ask, um, because um, people in the U.S. like to say that the system is sort of set up to fail young people, mm. you know, like or to to set them up for them to spend and like worry about money and, and, and then mm. they get in debt and they don't even get help. Uh, such as financial aid. Um, how is it in your country? Like, is it the same? Do you think, uh, like, for example, in New Zealand, right? Or in Ireland, you're from Ireland originally. Mm. Do you think the government helps young people with this? Like, for them to grow up and, and be financially literate and then not have to worry too much about these things? I think, like, a lot of countries are the same. And the big problem I find that is facing young people, no matter what com country you're in these days, because of the prices of houses going up so much, mm, that's mm. killing first time buyers, right? So like, I definitely hear it a lot that that's kind of one of the top things on young people's minds is in how can I get on the property market or the property ladder? Yeah. Um, mm. You know, and unfortunately, there's no easy way around it if, if house mm -hmm. prices are up so high. Uh, but in certain countries, they do affordable houses, you know, like making mm. the government might make X amount of houses that aren't crazy prices. Um, so that's kind of one thing that some governments kind of look at. Um, mm. But yeah, it's so hard to get on the property market now in a lot of countries for young people. It's just, and it can be like, as you say, overwhelming, right? And just hard to mm. do that. Um yeah there are even just, memes about it i don't know if you saw those videos live where it's like oh uh you know a day in the life of a millennial or a gen z and they're like looking at houses and they're like oh are you gonna buy and I'm, they're like no i'm just looking you know like oh yeah, yeah. buying oh, exactly. property what a what a funny thing to say you know for it us because funny, <laughs> eh? it is like it, it's crazy it, like in new zealand i oh, know across the world there's like a you know, the pr houses, pricing houses are going through the roof here in New Zealand. It's like gotten to the point where the interest for the average house that you make in a year that accumulates over a year is more than the average income of a, a couple put together sometimes. Um, wow. So yeah, you can't, it's just nearly impossible to buy a house. Yeah. Here. Because you, you could, you can be paying like, say for example, if your mortgage was like 3000 a month, like, 1500 that could be in the interest right as yeah, you say yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy isn't it yeah. it's so uh, i mean just looking at that coming out of your bank account look at that you're not even paying down the principal it's the interest so it's crazy yeah. it is so like hard that. for anyone like and so if you do get, as, that, as you you're say, like you know that stresses me out i don't want yeah, to think it stresses it. me out too i mean i'm oh God, <laughs> i only just turned 22 but if i you know think about when my parents brought, well, when my dad brought his first house, here, I think he was like 25 with his, with his, with my other mum, And I, I just, I don't do not think I'll ever own a house in my own country by 25. Right? I'm, I'm looking <laughs> at moving like countries it. at the moment because I just know that I don't feel like I'm ever going to be able to earn enough to live in my own country comfortably. So But, and I think that's the way the world's kind of going, like kind of just jumping exactly. around and trying to see where you can get a better deal, right? Like, yeah. It feels like. Well, unfortunately, that's, that's, that's feels the world like, we live in. Yeah. yeah, with inflation so high and the house price is so high. And yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely, the housing situation is definitely not one country's own problem. I see it in numerous countries, as in mm. like the prices are crazy high. Young people find it hard to get on the property ladder. Um, I mean, what do you do? You know, unless you get a property passed down from your parents, it's really hard for young people, right? Um, yeah. It's uh, and then you're competing as well with like investment funds or people who are investing in property, and obviously that's tough because then that drives up the prices, you know. Um, yeah. So yeah, there's no really easy answer um, other than supply and demand, right? If we're able to build more houses. I was going to say, you know, social media sometimes makes it look like young people are not doing enough. Like I, I see sometimes yeah. every now and then uh, videos of like super like 
uh, very high performance uh, entrepreneurs. And, and mm -hmm. they sell, sell you this idea that unless you're not like killing yourself to like sell things or like, you know, go at it, you know, like you're not doing anything. Right. And to me, that causes me a lot of anxiety. Because yeah. Mostly, like, what do you have to be like killing yourself to like sell all these things and be I, these I, things so that you can yeah. have money? Is that what it really comes down to? I think it's just like the priorities or what we prioritize amongst the generations is kind of changing. Like what we saw with the, the great resignation yeah. where people was just like, just pulled their fingers. were like, nah, don't want to work for you anymore. <laughs> But like, yeah. um, like here, oh, like what we're doing right now, Gabby, like doing, you know, mm. doing the work we're doing. My grandparents, they, like some of my parents don't really understand how this makes money, like, <laughs> or don't understand how I'm earning money right now. They'll just like think I'm just, yeah. I don't know, being on the internet, making videos and, and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I just, I don't know, maybe live on, maybe they think I live on a benefit or something. I don't know. But <laughs> It's such a different concept for people to grasp yeah. and make money off the internet. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, stuff. Yeah, stuff. In different generations have their own way of viewing things. And look at, you know, your kids might look back and see what we were doing here as being crazy and funny oh, exactly. And just like, so I get where you're coming from. But you're right, Gabby, about how there's so much pressure, as in yeah. like these entrepreneurs or these. And, uh, you know, it's Do you think like, there's a, a, an amount of toxicity from it? Because just like there's positive to uh, toxic mm. positivity, I feel mm. like there's ah, toxic. Yeah. What do what do you toxic call it? Toxic negativity. Like, <laughs> and no, no, toxic entrepreneurship. Like that hustle yeah. culture. That's what I'm mm. talking about. You know, like ah, yeah, I'll yeah, see yeah. some videos like from like, I don't know. Oh, and there'll uh, be what someone is this guy. Like, I don't know if you guys know this guy, uh, Gary B. And I, I, he's very knowledgeable, of course. Right. Uh, I've seen a couple of his keynotes. But uh, but I don't know. The way he sells you the idea that unless you're, like, struggling, you're hustling, you're up and, like, really early and going to bed really late and you're, like, working your ass off to, like get money you're 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 falling behind you know that's the idea that i get sometimes and not just from him but from other like this like big entrepreneurs you know and mm -hmm. to me that just like causes a lot of anxiety because the, and there i read the comments and there are people that go like even on linkedin i saw some of his videos and people go like well as as much as interesting as this sounds and as you know obviously it could be true for some people um it's not that healthy to sell that idea to all, every single person because like for me, like I don't like the whole idea of like struggling to make money, you know, just so that you can mm. have like all these millions. Like how about we normalize just having a regular job and paying yeah. off your debt and like having access to like good medical, you know, insurance and like paying or, or like buy, buying an affordable house that, you know, it can be paid with your salary, you know, but then again, like, that's not the reality we live in, you know, anymore. Yeah. I feel like no, but time's uh, You're right though, Gabby, in the sense of we literally just need to look after ourselves. And that's something that, mm. that I feel you feel that pressure from things like those videos or they'll be like, yeah, heaps of those videos are out there. I lived in a shoebox for one year and I <laughs> stuck it out and I ate nothing but grass and noodles. Yeah. And now I'm a and, billionaire. <laughs> right. And don't forget, like, this is the highlight reel. You know, it's like, is <laughs> yeah. this real? Is this really true? Don't forget those yeah. videos is, some of them can be, you know, as in taken on. Motivational. If, if you, so yeah, yeah if, you, if you sign up to this course, you're going to make X amount. And, you know, so there's a lot of craziness out there that you're trying to have to ignore, right? It's about, it's I guess, so for right. me, it's about it's about following reputable people, maybe. Wouldn't that be an idea mm. rather than... Oh, you're so right. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, take everything that you see in these videos, I suppose, with a pinch of salt, as a lot of people know. But, yeah, it can be overwhelming, the, the, the almost peer pressure in that you have to be an entrepreneur, you have to be hustling. It has, like, it's, you know, it's... Mm -hmm. You have to have the work-life balance as well. So I think that's yeah, where that kicks in. Um but definitely, I think if you start following the right people and kind of, you know, stay away from, I suppose, some of that, anyone that might give you, it's like anything in life, if something gives you a sense of anxiety, well, try and 
uh, cut that mm-hmm. off or just don't watch it, right? Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's, it's really hard, especially on those YouTube videos, just when the ads pop up, right? And <laughs> someone's trying to sell you stuff. on like TikTok or Instagram, I feel like the algorithm finds us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it, like, it, it so does. <laughs> yeah, and if you click on one ad by accident, it then comes back up later on. Oh, hey, I, I saw you clicked on to me for a few minutes. Do you want to yeah. know more? Mm-hmm. So it's so um, it's it's so smart the way they're able to like almost hunt you down, right? No yeah, matter what yeah. platform you're on. It's exactly um, how it feels. Right. Yeah. But it's but like it's so funny because like when you're relaxing, like I remember one day I was like watching TV and I, I just like I started scrolling down and all I saw was that like those motivational videos and like those like um how i made my first hundred thousand in mm. six months or whatever mm. and i was like holy cow like these videos like as motivational as some of them are like it makes you sort of it gets in your brain and you're like well i'm wasting my time you know i'm here watching the movie and and it gets in your head and that like i feel like that can cause a little bit of anxiety at least for me so sometimes mm. i gotta like you know pause and and not look at social media because it's mm. too much. I feel like there's too much information sometimes. Yeah, know? that's why we're living in, in an age of information overload, right? Yeah. Um, it's crazy. <laughs> like, yeah, and maybe we should try limit our notifications on our phones as well. You know, like... Isn't it like... Uh, I read something about our span attention. Like, it, it got shorter. That's why, uh, like, yeah. videos like TikTok are, like, only, like, 15 seconds or so. Because after yeah. that, you're, like, you're done. You're, like, scrolling up. Mm-hmm. And it's like, to me, that's crazy. Like how our span has decreased so much that we, and if you think about it, next time you're looking at a video, like how long, how many seconds have passed before you're done with the video? Or you like <laughs> have to like forward, fast forward so that you can, they can get to the point and yeah. then you go up, you know? <laughs> it's exactly. crazy. Well, yeah. Cause actually me and my friends were talking about that recently where my friend, she was always like, she loved reading books, but she noticed recently when she went back reading a book that she got bored after two seconds because you weren't yeah. doing that whole swiping down thing and having that instant gratification of, oh, here's something new or something exciting. So yeah. it's almost like we're addicted to that, uh, you know, news feed and that yeah. we have <laughs> to get we're not that. reading. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, so we're getting bored of books because mm-hmm. it just doesn't. Yeah. And she couldn't Same. believe it, how... how yeah, and she couldn't believe how she had almost clocked out of it. And it's, it just becomes an addiction. We're yeah. almost addicted to, like, mm. going through um, and maybe getting a hit of dopamine, you know, where mm. if you post something, you know, um, or if you get some likes, it could be something to do with that as well. But definitely yeah. uh, the, the social media has, um, yeah. No, it's crazy. Like, I've got um, – oh, no, that's what I was going to say. Have you guys ever – have you guys spoken to – a 10-year-old or someone younger than that lately <laughs> tried talking to yes. us. <laughs> yes. So, they are I talk nuts. with my sister. <laughs> she's 10. And she's like, you know, you get to tell her about something. Oh, Taylor, I've got something really exciting for you. And she's like, oh, yay, what is it? Like, is it going to be a new doll or something? You show her and she's like, ah, oh, what is that? Like, <laughs> back on TikTok. That's They're hilarious. savages. I, I honestly, I, I, I don't know if you know this, Shane, but I – um. Here in Peru right now, I'm teaching English um, mm. while I'm here. And yeah. some of my classes, you know, I teach to young kids. And mm. I was telling this the other day to, to my coworker, I am afraid of this like alpha generation because they're savages. They're not afraid to say anything. <laughs> like the other day, one of them was coming, like was going in like to the classroom. And he was, he looked really worried and they had like a midterm or something. It was like silly mm. quiz, you know, for kids. And I was like, what happened? You know, it looks like you saw a ghost. And he's like, yeah, I saw you. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, so yeah. like, okay. Oh, my God. They're not even afraid. You know, I would never say that as a kid, you know, like to my teacher, no. you know, like I was taught to be like respectful or whatever. They don't care anymore, you know. No, they don't. Yeah, they're so brazen. Like, that's just yeah. ridiculous. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> and And yeah. you see them, they're on their phones and they're like, they manage technology so well. It's mm. like scary. Like I can, I don't, I can't even imagine what they're going to do when they're like 20 or 25 or 30, you know, like the things we're going to have um, 
the conversations. <laughs> the conversations. So sarcastic. We won't know what the meaning anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really a double-edged sword because in one way, it's great for them to learn about technology and the different things out there, right? Mm. But on the flip side of that is, well, damage that it's doing to our kids and just, you know, a lot of toxic stuff that's online. And mm -hmm. so it's, but then you have to look at social media and some of these platforms and say, well, a lot of things they are doing, spreading good information and there is some good stuff out there. So it's true. We, we, we could sit here and demonize all of it, but like, it's about yeah. everything. It's like anything in life, moderation. Um, totally. Mm -hmm. but, um, but you're right about how generations are changing and just our reactions and like, what would pique someone's interest years ago, as you said, that's just, yeah, it's just mad. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Sometimes I feel terrible because, you know, if it's so hard for us, like as a generation, you know, or, you know, generations, because we're like, I feel like it's like millennials mm. and Gen Z going like exploring life together. Um, mm. Yeah. If it's so hard for us to buy property and like be financially stable, like I can't imagine how hard it's going to be for them, you know, to access like a house or be able to buy uh, or invest their money and like. I feel like in on a way they're going to be like financially literate more than us perhaps, but at the same time, like I can't imagine the prices or the interest rates that they're going to have to like face up to, you know, mm -hmm. like yeah. it's like in a way I, I feel like they're going to grow up to, to be more stressed if anything, because, you know, like the demands of life are even bigger. So I don't know. I just again, I think about that all the time. Mm. Yeah. Then they also there's so much more information out there about mental health and how important it is that it's managed. You know that like mm. old like the baby boomers. I was seeing. I saw a video the other day where they were talking about how hardcore they are. Like they can have PTSD, like deep dark they went depression, wars and they're just and like this. okay with it. They're just like no, I'm not going to counseling. No, I'm not. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> yeah, it's a different generation. Uh, but yeah. I know what you're saying, Gabby, about like your, your kids and how it's going. It was some, sometimes like every generation has their thing, right, or bad stuff going on. Like yeah. you could look back mm. at the 70s and 80s, how, you know, there was market crashes and there was, there was like recessions and things weren't good. Um, drugs. So, yeah. Yeah, drugs <laughs> as well. Everything. But like, I do feel like that things can get better. Uh, I think... People can get educated more now because uh, people have access to more information, right? That's the whole idea with the internet and being online. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, but it is daunting, I have to say, as you said, for um, our kids coming up in new generations in life and just like the house, the cost of living, all right? And yeah. then inflation, <laughs> um, it's just really, yeah. But I guess it starts with just education. That's all you can do, especially mm -hmm. in the schools at a younger age just how to manage and track your money, prioritize your big items, um, and you know, leave some leave some entertainment stuff or the nice stuff to the end, seeing what you've got left mm -hmm. over. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's like a lot of things in life, just trying to break it down to simple things and not overcomplicate it, because a lot of times we overcomplicate things, right? Um, yeah. So, yeah. I hope we'll, we'll be less materialistic, I think, just because we also were facing, mm -hmm. like, climate change you know and i feel like mm. and i think about this all the time like do I, when my mom asks me do you think you're gonna have kids and i'm like i don't know because I'm, you know resource there are too many of us too many to let to like too many people yeah. and little resources that's my my thinking you know so i feel exactly the same i'm like I'm there's like, I don't no incentive <laughs> <laughs> no incentive yeah. here <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and just life has <laughs> got so it. hard right for, yeah for young people now like it's really yeah tough to for a young person to start out or a young family you know as you said to get savings and then to live day by day it's just mm -hmm. life has got really hard I feel you're definitely right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um yeah it's just I think it like, almost it, it almost I almost feel jealous for people that are like you know I remember when my grandmother was still alive she was like oh relax you know life is beautiful when I was your mm -hmm. age now, like, yeah, I feel like the world looks, it was so much better back in the days. Like, I don't know, life was so much more 
I don't know, relax. I don't even know what to say. You know, people didn't worry about the things that we worry now. Well, now it's I like mean, water yeah. and air, yeah. and, you know. They still would have had their, that definitely have their struggles, like with the walls and things. But, and I definitely mm-hmm. think that every generation has had something crazy that they've had to overcome, right? And uh, yeah, that's just another another aspect of it. Yeah, I think COVID as well. I keep coming back to COVID. It's just changed so many things. Like, yeah, like so, some of my friends could have been stressed because they're like having to teach their kids at home with the homeschooling and mm. do their job. So that kind of I suppose made people either in families or maybe get into families and thinking about having families that, you know, wow, it's really stressful during a pandemic, you know, trying to homeschool kids as well as like do your job. So I think think that kind of got people second guessing as well. Wow. Is is really having a a big family, um, you know, long term. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Because it's just life has got so (laughs) tough. Yeah. Yeah. It really, it really did. And it's like, you know, money, obviously everything that you do involves money. Right. And having family as well. Like sometimes I wonder, you know, like if I can't buy a house, how am I going to have kids? You know? So I feel like that's the current struggle for Mm. millennials right now, like as far as money goes. And um, I think that that goes so connected with mental health because like, Mm-hmm. And there are people there, there if you if you look on TikTok or whatever, you know, there, there are people joking about it and they, they have to use humor to like cope with it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. definitely do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's our, yeah. our way of dealing with things. It's just humor. Yeah. We've talked about that before though, like, you know, when you get just have like a really dark sense of humor at some point in your life. Like I always know yeah. when I'm feeling depressed, my sense of humor just goes yeah. somewhere terrible. Like, <laughs> yeah, and we're, be- like we're, so, we're so good at like, it. Like, yeah. no, and I see videos like that. If you go into, and I feel like obviously the algorithm algorithm is targeting me, you know, my age, yeah, yeah, my yeah. demographic, but like people are so funny. And then you think about it. It's not really that funny. Is it? <laughs> like, like, you know, that's like, the most fucked yeah. up thing I just watched. Like, yeah, <laughs> I feel like we're dealing yeah, with things like such as money and like, uh, depression and stuff like that, you know, just with humor. And I don't know. Well, you know, yeah, humor is good though. Do. Like if, but, you know, sometimes it's, do you laugh or cry or something? So like, you know, <laughs> yeah. back to, there was, there was actually, I can't remember, there was a study done recently. I just heard it yesterday on a podcast about um, how important laughing is for you and even ah. preventing cancer. Wow. So really? Yeah. Because the good emotions, I can't remember if it's, um, Oh, the hormones. What are, maybe. what are the chemicals? Yeah. Yeah. That is released from laughter. Um, amazing. So wow. but even when we're talking about depression and mental health, uh, how important interaction. I know we feel like we just want to stay at home or something like that, but it's so important to get back out with your friends or mm-hmm. just go and talk to someone, you know, because it just mm-hmm. that laugh. And I think it could be something to do with the vagus nerve as well. So the vagus nerves run from your brain to your gut, right? It's um right your gut brain axis but that actually needs to be stimulated mm. so when you stimulate the vagus nerve like for example if you sing this is why singing is very therapeutic if you're mm. not feeling good um you know pop out a few tunes i'm serious okay. like there's lots of there's lots of research <laughs> behind this um how like singing um can help you kind of improve your mood yeah it's crazy yeah yeah nice i will start getting i'll start singing in the shower. We'll make a <laughs> the next podcast we can do you can yeah. do it too. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, I nice. Well, I think this is a nice sort of area to end the on for today because like we say after every podcast, we could keep talking for hours. And I definitely for think sure. there will be a part three with you, Shane. Um, awesome. But, Looking um, forward to it, guys. <laughs> yeah, me too. Thank you guys so much for uh getting up so early. To chat today, yeah. appreciate it. No, Likewise. thank you, and for thank you, you Shane. Up so late. Yeah. Oh, Thanks, it's Gabby. okay. I'm gonna sleep in. Yeah, tomorrow. it's bedtime for you, Liv. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. Well, um, if anyone wants to go see Shane and what he does online, where are they best to go find you? So my volunteer work with the Alex Patton Foundation. So uh, that's the Alex Patton Foundation Nice. Um, I'm on social. I'm on Facebook, but I'm not. I'm not cool enough yet for Instagram, but I'm getting there. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm on LinkedIn. You can look me LinkedIn. up on LinkedIn. 
Um, cool. Yeah, I, I run my support group every Saturday for the foundation. It's um, Breaking Barriers. So it's like from 12.30 to 2 p.m. in, um, in uh, Parcel 110. Uh, it's cool. in Georgetown. Um, so that's in every Saturday Island. afternoon in the Cayman Islands. My okay. bad. I should have actually, yeah. No, it's okay. So, uh, good. Thank you so much. All cool, right. So and if thanks you for wanna... having me. <laughs> You're right. Sorry, I spoke over you there. Um, but I was just going to say to the listeners, for those of you who are wanting to watch the video version of today's podcast, it is out on YouTube. Or if you're already there watching this, you can go listen to it on Spotify or all other major podcast streaming platforms. So thank you so much for listening and have a nice rest of your day, Shady Gabby. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> See ya.